You know, we mentioned offline this idea of bringing people back to life through um, through artificial intelligence. Sort of, I don't know if you've seen videos of basically animating people back to life. Meaning uh, whether it's, for me personally, I've been working on specifically about Al Albert Einstein, but also Alan Turing, Isaac Newton, and Richard Feynman. And it's, it's an opportunity to bring people that meant a lot to others in the world and uh, animate them and be able to have a conversation with them. Uh, at first to try to visually, visually explore the, the full richness of character that they had as they struggle with the ideas of the modern age. Sort of it's less about bringing back their mind and more bringing back the the visual quirks that made them who they are. And then maybe in the future, it's using the textual, the visual, the, the, the video, the audio data to actually compress down the person for who they are and be able to generate text. There's a few companies, there's Replica, which is a chat engine that was born out of the idea of bringing, the, the founder uh, lost her friend uh, to uh, he he got run, ran over by a car, and the in initial reason she founded the company was tr trying to just have a conversation with her friend. She trained a machine learning uh, natural language system on the text that they exchanged with each other, and try she had a conversation with him sort of after he was gone. Uh, and it's very the the conversation was very trivial. It was obvious that it's. Uh, you know, a AI agent, but it gave her solace. It, it made me, her actually feel really good. And that's the way I wonder if it's possible to bring back people that are, that mean something to us personally, not just Einstein, but um, people that we've lost. And in that way, achieve a kind of small artificial immortality. I don't know if you think about this kind of stuff. Uh, well, I definitely think about a lot of things that that one's a really good one there's a great black mirror episode about the the wife who brings back the the boyfriend or husband i think one of the challenges with bringing back richard Feynman would be to to capture his sense of humor but that would be awesome um but yeah bringing back loved ones would be great especially if uh if it's you're they're young and and uh they they die early though it may hold you back from moving on that's another thing that could happen as a negative but i think that's great and i also think that it's going to be possible especially when we're, we're recording some of us, every aspect of our lives, whether it's our face or uh, things we see, right? Eventually one day, everything we see can be recorded. And then you can you can build somebody's experience and, and thoughts, uh, speech, and, and you will have replicas of everybody, um, at least digitally uh, and physically, you could do that too one day. But that that's a, a good idea, especially because there are people that I'd like to meet and I think it's easier than building a time machine. One person I'd love to meet is <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. Really? Well, I wouldn't go back in time. Um, I would, but I'd prefer to bring him into the future and say, can you believe we have this thinking machine in our pockets now? And he just see the look on his face as to where humanity has come. Because I think of him as a modern guy that just was before his time. Yeah, so you're you're thinking Benjamin Franklin the scientist, not Benjamin Franklin the political thing, because he'd be very upset with Congress right now. <laughs> right. So maybe talk to him about science and technology, not uh, not politics, or maybe just don't get him on Twitter because he'll be very upset with human civilization. You know, I, I wonder what their personalities are like. Isaac Newton. It does seem complicated to figure out what their personalities like. Even Friedrich Nietzsche, who I also thought about. Feynman is we just have enough video where we get the full kind of, um, I mean, it shows you how important it is to get not the official kind of book level presentation of a human, but the authentic, the full spectrum of humanity. You mentioned collecting data about a person, like collecting the whole thing, the whole of life, the ups and downs, the embarrassing stuff, the beautiful stuff, not just the things that's condensed into a book. And then with Feynman, you start to see that a little bit through conversations, you start to see peaks of like that genius. And then through stories about him from others. And then certainly you, uh, the, the, the sad thing about Alan Turing, for example, is there's very little, if any, uh, recording of him. In fact, I haven't been able to find recording. Allegedly, there's supposed to be a recording of him 
uh, doing some kind of uh, radio broadcast, but I haven't been able to find anything. And so that that's 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 truly sad. That it feels like it makes you realize how the upside, how nice it is to collect data about a person, uh, to, to capture that person. There's that's the upside of the modern internet age, the digital age, that that information, uh, yeah, creates a kind of immortality. <laughs> The, and then you can choose to highlight the best parts of the person, maybe throw away the, the ugly parts and uh, celebrate them even after they're gone. So that's a really interesting opportunity.